What's up guys, Zade here, and today I'm going to be going over a bunch of different cards that you can use Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion against. I did a video similar to this on Ghost Ogre, and somebody requested me to do one on Bell, so here it is. And with that being said, if you guys have any hand traps you want to know how to use similarly to this, against the current meta, of course, let me know in the description, or in the comments. And also in the comment section, if you feel like there's um, Ghost Bell targets that I, not targets, but places you can interrupt that I missed for meta relevant decks or even like tier two decks, please let me know in the description. And even if you don't personally have any off the top of your head to add to, and I keep saying description in the comments, even if you don't personally have anything to add in the comments, then like still make sure you check the comments because it should be a pro, it should be a good resource too, just like this, because people are going to say what I missed and collectively we'll be able to come up with like everything. But I'm going to just get right into it. Some of the most relevant ones are these first two. The fact you can stop Water Enchantress of the Temple. This card allows you to banish her from hand or graveyard to add um, right from hand or from deck or graveyard to hand. And because it says or graveyard, you can bell it. Same with Nadir's Servant. Nadir adds from deck or from grave, so you can bell that. Even if they're not trying to add from grave, the fact that it includes an effect that adds from grave means it can be belled. In the Prank Kids matchup, you can hit Pranks and Plan as the um, main deck cards you can hit. Also, in the extra deck, you can hit uh, Bow Wow Bark, Dodo Doodle Doo, and Rocket Ride. Three cards that it's actually very high impact when you hit. These two aren't very high impact, but they're worth mentioning. And a lot of lists don't even play Plan. You can potentially hit Scythe from coming back from Grave. And on that note, you can also hit DPE. Because a way they would chain block you from hitting one of these, they would pop Scythe and DPE. And choose which one they want as chain link one, which one they want as chain link two, and whatever one they make chain link two, you can bell. And so you might get scythe, but the DP is not going to come back, and you might not get scythe, but have to deal with the DPE. And in decks that like aren't playing the scythe or that are playing it, but they couldn't get to the Dagda, you still can stop the DPE. So it's still like pretty strong in that regard. In the Eldritch matchup, you can stop Hawkero from uh, banishing a card from your graveyard. Um, how does this work? Do you negate the activation? Yeah, since you negate the activation, I think the monster doesn't even summon. And then you could stop the Golden Lord from coming out, and you could stop both of these, um, Eldlixers from reviving the Golden Lord, too. And then, in the Striker matchup, you can hit Rose, you can hit Ray. both of their recur themselves from Grave Effects. You can't in the damage step, I don't think. Maybe you can, actually, because it negates activations. I think... Let me know in the comments if you know that. I, I think you can use this in the damage step because it negates the activation. But you can also hit Shark Cannon. You can hit Hercules Base. And you can hit the uh, Kagari from adding from Grave to Hand. You also can hit Called By. This one's a funny thing that I will probably never forget. Because when Striker first came out, I was at a YCS, I believe. And I was playing um like a regional flight. Where, if you guys don't know what those are, you have to go like 5-0 or 4-0 or something, and I, yeah, I think it's 4-0, 16 players, single elimination, you play, the winner gets an invite to Nats, and my round four, I'm playing the mirror match, and I ashed his engage, and he called by my ash, and I had a bell in my hand, and I believe it was my boy Dave was roasting the fuck out of me after it, because I didn't bell the called by, because this card was still really new to me, and there was not a resource like this with people telling you exactly what you can and can't hit, and I just, my brain didn't process that hitting the call by was a play I could have done. And then I lost, and I would have won if I did it. So, yeah, remember you can hit the call by. And in that regard, you can hit a DD Crow too. If you're playing something like the Scythe DPE, and they were to, like, crow you to stop it, you'd bell their crow, you're in there. And, like, the Burning Abyss deck, it could hit Seer or Barbar, -Bar, and it also could hit Dante. Not Dante's uh, milling, but Dante's add back. And the Seer is kind of important for PK, too, because, like, they're not playing it right now. They're typically playing this, but they'll gravitate back eventually. And then there's, in PK, you can hit all the traps that recur. You can hit Torn Scales from coming back from Grave. And you can hit the Break Swords effect when it's destroyed to Special 2 from Grave. This is a kind of cool one, because the way the deck currently plays, if they're trying to play around Droplet, they'll make this on their turn, pop it to special the two back out, and then link with those two to make the Anaconda or the Dagda. And being able to hit that is going to probably make it so they can't, like, Scythe Rock, 
lock you through Droplet because they committed the resources to this, expecting it to be free to just get both back, and then you'd cut them out of two link material. Then we've got Tri Brigade Revolt. This is one that I've always thought was really cool that it can hit in like the format where we had like Alistair, um, the Alistair deck with the Nadir Servant and stuff, and then we had Pure Tri Brigade and stuff like that. I thought that that card was really spicy, to be honest, the Ghost Bell, because against the Tri Brigade deck, I don't think it does anything like on their turn. It's not really doing much. But the fact that it stops a refold on your turn means you could draw it as the sixth card. And like I like when hand traps can be drawn as the sixth card and still be pretty high impact. And Bell, you're stopping the exact card you wanted to hit if it's a six, so that's kinda cool. Then against the virtual world deck, there's actually a lot it can hit. It can hit Juan Wu's recursion effect, it could hit Nian Nian from coming back out. It can completely stop Lulu and Gigi because they both include an effect that adds from Grave. And it can also stop Shen Shen from coming back out. So pretty versatile in that matchup. It's going to be like an extra Ash in the sense that it could stop these guys. So if you open like Ash Bell against that deck, they probably lose because you're going to Ash the Lulu and then you're going to Bell whichever one of these comes up first. Or whichever one feels like it'll be more prominent. Then you also... this deck and other decks play those you can hit snow and you can hit destrudo to note with snow though if you hit snow they can chain snow's effect if they have enough targets and just banish seven more and still do it you can hit the destrudo like i said do you still pay the life points so let's check um yeah so they would pay half their life to do nothing if you build this card and that would be kind of funny it can also stop Basil Rose Shoot. A lot of people are playing that engine, the like Rocks Rose and shit. Also, I keep messing with my face because my mustache and beard is getting a little long. And it's playing with my lips and that shit feels a little weird. So, yeah, if you keep noticing me doing that, that's why. But uh, you can hit the Basil Rose that everyone's playing. Not everyone, but like the base decks are playing. There's uh, In the Fluanderies matchup, you can hit Stree, which... It's not very relevant. You, This is another cool one you can hit, is Rise of the Mega Monarch. You're probably going to side Bell out in this matchup, I'm guessing. But the fact that it has these utilities is important to know if it's a card you opt to main deck at any point in history. And don't blow up the comments being like, Bell's not even a good card right now, da 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 I, I didn't ask that. I didn't say that either. I didn't say, is Bell good? I'm telling you where you can Bell. So if you play Bell... This is information you'll know. This is also something to take into consideration when deciding if you want to play Bell or not. Because some of these decks is very high impact against. Some, it's not so much. If your local meta has a whole bunch of like virtual world and invoked, even though the, the grand scheme of the game would say don't play Bell, if your meta would be hurt by it a lot, play it. But watch this video and know that like if you're going to play that Bell, you might play it in matchups where it's not that good, and you might not know where to even use it, I'm going to tell you where to use it. Or at least for the most part, try to tell you where to use it the best I know how. And then we've got Sacred or Sword Soul Sacred Summit. This card is not standard in the lists even anymore, but if they're playing it, you can hit it. It's just Monster Reborn. Should all schism. This is sick because if they flip this, even if they're not planning on using the effect yet, you can bell it. And then, because you bell it on activation, it negates the activation. So, the schism goes to grave. So, like, it out schism. And the same as revolt, you can draw it as your sixth card and you're lit. In that same matchup, you can stop invocation. But that's awkward because you can't if meltdown's on the board. Maybe you can't negate schism if meltdown's on the board either. Not sure how that works. But I'm assuming you couldn't, actually um the effects of your cards and effects that are, yeah you couldn't bell this if the meltdown was on board but if it's not you could bell both of these and it's pretty high impact because it completely gets rid of the schism or it gets rid of the macabre without letting them recycle with invocation so that's kind of lit against drytron you can hit basically every drytron because they recur themselves from grave <clears throat> excuse me so you can hit every single main deck drytron you can hit the Drytron spell. You can hit the Drytron XYZ. Also, I didn't cover some of these, but I'll go over them real quick because I almost missed them. You can Selene Monster Reborn, so you can Bell Selene. You can Bell Striker Dragon's effect to add from Grave to Hand. 
You can bell Pisty's effect to special summon. You can bell Supreme Sovereign Ching Yang's effect to banish a card from field and grave. You can banish Makaba's effect. If they are negating a hand trap or a card that functions like one. If they're negating a card that discards from hand to graveyard as cost or tributes from field to graveyard as cost, you would be able to bell the Makaba because the, Ma the monster the Makaba is trying to negate is in the graveyard and they're trying to banish it. So you'd be able to bell that. And then, like I said, the Mubeta, you can hit the, um, the Foolish Burial effect. And you can hit Shaman of the Tenny, which lets you discard to special attendee from the or a worm from the grave. You can bell that effect. You can bell Dotscaper's effect to special itself, which is kind of important because some Eldritch decks are playing it. You can bell Gamma in hand because even if the driver's not in grave, it tries to summon from grave. You can bell Branded in red, which lets you target a Despia in your grave, add it to hand, and then fusion summon. Not as relevant now, and the structure deck comes out very relevant. And then lastly, in the DDD matchup, you can hit Lamia, you can hit Genghis, you can hit Baby Genghis, and then you can hit Alexander. And there's probably a bunch of other cards that can hit in that matchup. A lot of the DDD cards summon from Greek. But that's the, the cards that I have for you guys. If there's more that you can think of, like I said, let me know in the comments. I will appreciate it very much. And thank you guys for watching. I'm also sorry to the dude that requested this. That I don't remember exactly who requested it. But if you're watching it, please let me know that it, it was helpful for you or if it was helpful for you. And if it wasn't, let me know what I could have done better because I forget your name, my dog. But this was particularly for you. So thank you for watching.